In this class, we are going to learn how to develop the Azure function with the help of Visual Studio Code. So I am here in the documentation page by Microsoft on how to develop the function with the help of VS Code. You can have a look at the prerequisite. First and the foremost thing is we need to have the Visual Studio Code installed on our computer. So you can make use of this download section under Visual Studio.microsoft.com and you can install the Visual Studio 2022. With the help of this, you can only develop the C sharp, but if you use the Visual Studio Code, you can develop the function using all the supported languages in Azure. This is very lightweight and this comes with the extensions. With the help of extension, you can develop the function. If you want to just develop and deploy, we can make use of the extension that is Azure Functions extension, which we will see how to install in our VS Code. And if you want to run and debug, then we need to install the Azure Functions Core tool, which we had installed in our previous class. So you can refer our previous class on how to install this Azure Functions Core tools. This is only if you want to run locally. Just if you want to create and deploy, you can go ahead with this only the extension that is Azure Function extension. Here Microsoft has provided each and every step which we need to follow in order to build the functions app locally. Now we will go ahead with our class and see how to build the functions app with the help of VS Code. First of all we have to create the workspace in which we will be creating our functions code or the functions app. And then we have to go to the extensions over here and search for Azure functions. So this is the prerequisite before going ahead with development of the functions app we need to install the Azure functions. So the publisher of this or the creator is Microsoft. Click on this install. This has been installed successfully. As soon as you install this, there will be an icon created over here with the name Azure. Click on this and we need to click on sign into Azure. So it will open up the prompt wherein we have to provide the details to sign in. Done. We have signed into our account. So it will show the active subscription over here. So one more thing is we need to make sure we have the active subscription for our account. Now here there are n number of things available. So we can make use of the functions app in order to create a new function app over here. We can just click on this plus we can select from the options create a functions app. So if we click on this it will ask the unique name. So I will provide the name as BL testing 104 and click on enter. It will ask the runtime. So as we are going to create the function with the help of JavaScript, I am selecting this Node.js 18 LTS. Then it will ask the region, I will select East US because I am creating all the resources in the East US region. So this will create a functions app for you. So it will take some time in order to create the function that is BL testing 104 in our case and the function app will be created over here with the runtime environment as Node.js. We can verify from the Azure portal as well. Go to functions app, just refresh our functions app will be listed over here. That is BL testing 104. Currently, we do not have any functions which are deployed to this application. We will create one. Now, let me go back to this VS Code export. We won't see any functions created as we don't have any. Now, in order to create the function, we need to come to this workspace, click on plus new, and it will ask where you want to create the function. I will select folder as Azure function. This is the local environment folder. Next, it will ask what is the language I will be using. I will select JavaScript and I will select the model v3 over here. Next, it will ask the template. I will select the HTTP trigger. It will ask for the name. I will keep it default. If we use anonymous as an authorization level, then anybody across the web can access this function. If we go for the function, we need a unique function key. If we select the admin, then we need a unique master key in order to access our function. For time being, I will select this anonymous. It will be creating a new project over here or the function for us. Now, if you just expand this, we can see the function it has created that is HTTP trigger one with the code we can see over here. That is, it will show the function.js. Function.json is the file which will hold the details for the trigger as well as the input binding as well as the output binding as we had seen in our previous model. Now, if we go to the workspace, here we can see in detail the functions file. As I told, functions.json file will hold all the details related to the trigger, input and output bindings. Coming to the index.js, this is the main file which will carry all the code for our function. So, index.js file is the main file which will carry all the details for our code. Here, if you see, our function is searching for the name in the query parameter or in the body. If it finds the name, then it will send back the customized message like hello and the name pass and the message. In case name is not sent, then it will send the message something like this, that is to pass the name. And sample.dat is the file in which we can provide the test data. So like this, we can create a functions app locally. 
suppose if you add to add the binding you can just click on this and add the binding it will ask in and out so we'll add few more bindings over here going ahead in our next class we will learn how to test and debug this function with the help of vs code